Welcome to a special Legal AF hot take devoted to the results of today's bond hearing involving Donald Trump, $175 million attempted bond that he tried to post to stop the collection of the $465 million civil fraud judgment obtained by the New York Attorney General on behalf of the people of the state of New York. We've got a result from a less than two hour hearing and I'm going to bring on here a new guest on our uh, on our podcast and on Legal AF, retired Judge Barbara Jaffe, who for 13 years was on this same New York State Supreme Court trial level court. She's a friend and colleague of Judge Ngoron, although she doesn't have any insider information. But she was insider in the sense that she was in the courtroom today for the bond hearing in a front row seat. And we're going to be able to report through Barbara, through Judge Jaffe, exactly what the new deal is that was worked out today, all in favor of the New York Attorney General, all concessions having to be made by Donald Trump and his lawyers in order to keep that bond in place and stop collection efforts against Donald Trump's assets. Let me bring on uh, Honorable Judge Barbara Jaffe, retired. Barbara, how are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm How so, are you? I'm doing great. I'm so glad. You and I talked about it. We have a, a mutual friend, a colleague of mine that I used to work with uh, back when I was a young lawyer. It's hard to believe that actually happened. And we said, maybe there's a moment in time when it would be great to have you on Legal at AF as a new voice with your experience, 13 years, this very courtroom and courthouse that we're talking about and uh, having presided over Trump matters and all that. And we said, wait a minute, the bond hearing. I said to Judge Jaffe, are you going to the bond hearing? He said, I am. And here we go. Judge, tell our audience first up front, what is the deal that was struck um, and how favorable do you think it is for the uh, New York uh, Attorney General? Well, I believe that after hearing uh, Mr. Keis open for the defendants and then hearing Mr. Amer open for the AG and what they wanted, and they wanted an all cash account. Right now, that account with Schwab is not all cash, and that's, that's the collateral for the bond. So they pretty much agreed to everything that the AG wanted, which is one, a deposit, um, sorry, uh, oh, the one thing they didn't get was a deposit with the court. That's the one thing they did not agree to. But what they agreed to with that it would be that the cash account would be a money market account, and that Knight Specialty would have exclusive control over it. They can't trade or withdraw, and Knight Specialty is the surety in this case. Knight Specialty Insurance Company, which is a foreign insurance company. They are not authorized to write surety bonds in New York, but that was not even mentioned. Um, they will provide, uh, the defendant, uh, Schwab will provide monthly statements or the defendants will provide monthly statements of account to the AG, which had been resisted at first. And the pledge agreement backing up the bond and the control agreement backing up the bond would be amended accordingly. The pledge agreement is expected to be appropriately amended by Friday, whereas the control agreement which will require uh, Schwab to participate, it might take a few more days. And the fifth is that Knight Specialty consented to jurisdiction in New York should there have to be any enforcement proceedings. They consented to the service of process and everything. So that is something that's very helpful. A stipulation will be re reduced to writing and we can expect that shortly. So let me unpack some of that for our audience and sort of um, get it down to primary colors the way we like to do on Legal AF. The issue here was that the appellate division, the appellate bosses for Judge Ngoron, had basically did a solid for Donald Trump and had reduced the amount of the bond instead of being dollar for dollar to the judgment. $465 million. It looks like they bought the argument that Donald Trump was having difficulty raising the full amount of the bond. Although we've talked about on Legal F, 
uh, Legal AF why that's probably not true, and that this very same company run by Don Hankey looked like it was willing to put up 465 if they had to. But they reduced the amount that was required to be put up to 175 million. It's an undertaking. Donald Trump had in his in his organization had various ways they could have um, satisfied the undertaking requirement. They could have put cash, $175 million deposited into the court registry. That would have satisfied the undertaking. Um, that's usually what you do in, uh, on smaller amounts anyway. Donald Trump had done just that in the E. Jean Carroll case where he had to post a $5.5 million bond rather than going through a surety and all of this process that, that Judge Jaffe just talked about and pay, a, and pay um, a, a premiums and fees related to getting a bond in place, just put the cash in the bank. And we all wondered why he's not just doing that, because the major asset that was backing the $175 million bond was a Schwab account, as Judge Jaffe just described. But as you know, Michael, he never <laughs> liked, Donald Trump never likes to use his own money. Right. Well, that's true. So he wanted a buffer between his money and the New York Attorney General getting her hands on it. But the problem is, the bigger the buffer, the more pro the more hurdles you make the judgment creditor go through, the less of it, it really being an undertaking or a surety. Especially, and I want to hear from you in a minute, Barbara, especially when this is a case about an adjudged fraudster. Persistent fraud over 10 years has already been determined. This isn't like uh, another kind of case, you know, a negligence case or, a, or even a defamation case. This is about a, a person that's already been found under New York law to have committed fraud. So, uh, so, so these were the variations on a theme that 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 Donald Trump could have used. He went and found this friend of his who owns a small bonding company in California, a donor of Donald Trump, who also is, as we've joked on the show, but it's true, the king of the subprime auto loan. If you have bad or no credit, you go to Don Hankey, hence Donald Trump. And the problem we saw, you and I and all observers saw with the with the filings originally and why we're even in court today with, uh, with uh, the New York Attorney General basically demanding that the bond be, um, we have a hearing over it, is that when you looked at the finances, it was a trading account, meaning it was a Schwab account like anybody can have with their stocks and their bonds and whatever in it, and maybe some cash left over. And it had a two day window in which even if the bond was called, ready to put the bond up to, to pay over to the attorney general, there was a two day delay to allow Donald Trump to know to do who knows what. So all of these issues were called out by the attorney general talk to the audience about how Judge Angoron even started this off and how he led the parties into what you and I, who practice in New York, jokingly refer to as a little handling, a little haggling, a little Lebanese bazaar going on in the Persons. hallways of the New York Supreme Court, which happens, by the way, all the time. It's what I used to refer to as deli counter justice. Take a number, go in the hallway, come back to me when you have a resolution. Right? How many times did you say that when you were a judge? Well, I did. I would say, in the words of um, Make It Work from Project Runway, Make It Work. Right. Tim was his yeah, name. Tim yes. so tell, us about, tell us about the Angoron and what you saw from the very beginning. As usual, Justice Angoron was masterful. That's my humble opinion, and as far as it's not clouded by my friendship with him. Um, judges can be brutally critical of other judges, and I see nothing to criticize him with. He, after hearing Mr. Keist talk about what a terrific bond this is and how absolutely wonderful it is, Justice and Gorin broke in and said, suppose the agreement is broken by the defendants. Mr. Kaiser's response was indignation, which I find somewhat rich given this case, as you pointed out, Mike, Michael. Uh, so that kind of started the ball rolling. There was a lot of back and forth, lots of back and forth between Justice and Gorin and Mr. Kais, where they discussed all of these, these side issues about, um, you know, Kais actually started to accuse Justice Gorin of having some kind of conspiracy theory 
about this? And of course, Justice Warren said, no, no. What was the, what was the, what, what did you make of her being in the courtroom? What did you think even the conspiracy theory was? What is it? The, the conspiracy among Schwab, Knight Specialty, and Trump to have this complicated framework in order to, you know, then grab the money, take the money and run. But, um, so th that was, I think, made the AG think to themselves, uh, made the defendants think to themselves, hmm, maybe we better settle this now before something bad happens. That's, that's my view of it. You know, at one point, Justice Ngoren called it a house of cards. He says, each agreement, the pledge agreement, the control agreement, everybody agrees to something. But never in the bond does the surety promise to pay. That was a big issue. The surety never promised to pay. Is there um, in the bond? Yeah, let's talk. Let me break that down for a minute for the audience and then, then yes. have you answer it. We, when we looked at um, the bond paperwork, uh, usually it's a form. You and I, when we practiced, we used to call it the old Bloomberg forms. I mean, usually it's a form bond. I mean, you rip it off a page and you send it in. This one has some very unique language, and we thought some missing magic language about the bonding company actually making the undertaking that they were supposed to make. We were like, what is going on? Is this a bond? Is this a shirt? What is this? So that actually came up in court today? Yes, it did. Justice and Gorin raised it, and Mr. Kais said, uh, but it's an undertaking. It's like Ipsit Dixit. No, it's an undertaking, but you don't have the language. And ultimately, Justice and Gorin, or was it, no, the AG's office came up with a case on point where, no, you have to have the specific language for it to be a proper undertaking. So that's going to be amended as part of the deal. Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, yes. So it's they're going to fix, they're going to fix that language. Mm -hmm. So, um, <clears throat> Now, you and I, before we, we jumped on here, there was a very interesting observation, and, and I want to bring it I want to bring it out for the audience about a lockbox. In the law and in resolutions of money issues, we often refer to give confidence to some uh, settlement or some trust or some resolution. We talk about it as being in a lockbox or a locked box so that the bad people can't get their hands on it. And, and it sounds like that came up, that concept about the Schwab account as really being in a locked box. Talk about how that happened and how that was brought up. Well, it's, I don't, let, let me look at my notes, um, all ultra secure. I think it was during, I think actually Mr. Kai said we, we could do something like that. I mean, when he, a after he here got an ear full of uh, Justice and Gorin's concerns, he might indeed have raised that, but we can, he did raise it. He said, we can put all cash in it. That was his idea. And he might have used the term lock. No, he didn't use, the AG used the term lock box. All right. Yeah, yeah, I think also, so, you got, so you got the AG saying it needs to be in a locked account, a locked box, so that it's not traded, so yeah. it's not traded away from the account, so that it really is a, a, a marker, a bond, behind the judgment. Look, let, let's not forget all of this. There is a judgment creditor and there is a judgment debtor. The judgment debtor is Donald Trump et al. For $465 million, 9% compounded annual interest running daily, basically. And you've got a judgment creditor in the form of the people of the state of New York by Letitia James. And so all of this heist stuff that you've mentioned, like, Judge, why are we why are we being criticized? Why don't you trust us? Why don't we trust you? <laughs> Thirteen week trial, Barbara, you sat in for most of it. Thirteen week civil fraud trial and a monitor in place in the form of Barbara Jones says we don't trust you for a good reason. Of course, one of Mr. Kais's other reasons was well, you have a monitor. So what do you need all this stuff for? But I'm not sure the monitor has any authority over the bond. And even if she did, let's let's put everybody in their proper lanes and let's do it properly. Was she there, Barbara? Was, was I didn't the see monitor her. there, Barbara I Jones? I didn't see her. Okay, right. Her. And, I've and, never yeah. seen her at any proceeding. And we had talked yesterday about potential witnesses being used. Donald Trump had an expert on bonding that he was going to put up. Somebody used to be the insurance commissioner or superintendent of insurance in New York. You know, we thought, mm, that's interesting. And some other people. But did any witnesses actually get on today at this evidentiary hearing? 
No, and indeed, um, after Mr. Kai started his opening, the AG popped up and said, we'd like the witnesses excused because they were in the courtroom. And actually, they didn't have to excuse um, Mr. Serio, the, the former superintendent, because expert witnesses do not have to be excused during trial. It's only fact witnesses that must be excused. But they both hightailed it out of there, and they were never called to testify. This was really masterful on Justice and Gorn's part. To resolve something like this um, is, I think, really important, and, and it, 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 it was an excellent outcome. And by the way, something you said, Michael, before about the 400 million plus uh, judgment that they could have written. I don't think that Knight Specialty could have written that bond for that amount. And I think that Donald Trump went to Hankey because it, it, it was only after he got it reduced to 175 and with a view to getting it down to 175. That's why he went to this company. Uh, it's I think you're right. Even though Hanky, who seems to be enjoying his 15 minutes of fame, I've learned more about this bonding company and Don Hanky than I ever thought I needed to know. Uh, he's on news, giving interviews, but he's the one that said, I was considering giving them the 465 or 456, whatever it was. But you're right. Looking at mm -hmm. the actual financials that were filed by Knight Specialty Insurance, which seemed to be sort of a Potemkin village there, uh, right behind it, a parent company, right behind it, Don Hankey's bank account, his own, you know, Hanky Panky piggy bank uh, there, right? Mr. Um, Hanky from South Park. We, lo we, we, love, we love the whole Mr. Hanky. It, I love this case. We got Mr. Pecker over <laughs> at, the, at the trial going on right now as the number one witness, Mr. Hanky over here. If, seriously, people landed from Mars. They think we're making all this stuff up. We're not. So today, just to summarize what happened, and I think you're right, they would never have been able to post this bond because they were looking for a dollar to dollar match from Donald Trump in assets in cash, not even a building. It wasn't even like he could throw him the keys to like 40 Wall Street and say, here you go, take this. Like nobody wanted that because of the valuation issues at the heart of the case. Cash on the barrel head, that's what you needed. And that was, that was his ultimate problem, tying up that much cash. Another point, was that um, all of the problems with the bond itself, the, two, the, um, the, the Knight Specialties Authority to do business in New York, all of that went away with this deal. And one could say, well, if they're not authorized, why are we allowing to write this bond? Well, I think that the AG, that's what they gave in return. We won't quibble with this. We want this done also. Yeah, they so want it. This, wanted, was, this was not a total, totally this was a bilateral uh, yeah it was a it was a compromise and they decided to take impossible. i mean uh, just to be clear for the audience the, judge angoran had no authority to increase the amount of the bond i know a lot of people are upset with the bond amount but his bosses at the appellate division first department already gave the 175. so all and what angoran judge angoran needed to do was work within that and come up and get comfortable with, along with the attorney general with a bonding undertaking procedure logistics that made sense and he had looks like a cooperating partner in the new york attorney general and as you said a probably scared you know what a uh, donald trump because this could have went south quickly if the bond had got bounced and and and, Ang and goron said sorry this doesn't work we're out there back to the appellate division trying to figure out whether some substitute for what they what they supplied so to summarize the new deal that'll be papered and amend, amended documents will be uploaded and we'll take a look at it require the following, that the Charles Schwab account be in cash only, not in securities. Um, that it that there be an under an actual language undertaking by the by the surety company now that it has complete uh, it has complete collateral to um, undertake uh, to pay on the bond if there is a default by Donald Trump and he doesn't pay. So we'll have that. It's going to be like a lockbox cash account that's dedicated to the collateralization of the bond with that new change in language. Knight Insurance, which there's always been speculation, they don't even do business in New York. They'd have to be sued in California, is going to waive any jurisdictional uh, defenses. They had to be sued in Delaware, I think. Oh, Del oh, they were a Delaware company. Right. They're gonna they're gonna they're going to um, 
uh, they're going to allow New York jurisdiction over them. They're not going to, they're going to, uh, they've worked out service of process. They're not going to fight in any of that. So the attorney general has what she wants. She's got an entity that is at, at least de facto a virtual New York underwriter, even if we don't think they really are. And, and so, it's actually the people of the state of New York that have profited from this. And a lot of, a lot of you, maybe not your viewers, but other people don't understand that it's the people of the state of New York who were the victim here. Oh yeah, I mean, I, one of the things that I, and I agree with you, I think our audience does, but we like to reinforce it. One of the, even when it's listed, for instance, and this is the way we do it in New York, when uh, the Manhattan DA listed on their Sandoval notice that got resolved today about the things that they're gonna be able, they wanna be able to use against Donald Trump if he takes the stand. And, and Judge Mershon already today, and I have another hot take up on that one, has already said that he's going to allow every, back to Judge Angoron for a minute, every ruling and decision by Judge Angoron, including the gag order and the violation of the gag order is fair game and cross-examination of Donald Trump under the Sandoval ruling. Even there, when the, when the prosecutors listed the name of the case, they, uh, the, the Judge Angoron's case, they listed it properly as the people by Letitia James. That's because right. that's her role. She's not, everyone's like, where does that money go? It goes to the general treasury of the people of the state of New York. That's right. Right? And it gets mm -hmm. used for whatever purpose the legislature decides to use an extra $470 million. And I look forward to watching your hot take on the criminal proceeding because I didn't get to see that. Yeah. Well, well, I'm, well I'm really looking forward to that. See, there is a God who <laughs> liked legal AF and might as Dutch because what he decided to do today he or she, whatever your deity, is to is to cut the trial short. <laughs> they already ended the trial because, uh, and this probably chapped the backside of Donald Trump. A juror had another commitment, and the judge accommodated it. You, you know, Donald Trump's thinking, "What? Well, I, I couldn't go to the graduations. I couldn't go to the Supreme Court oral argument. And we're taking a half day on this. Yes, we're taking a half day. They did oral argument, uh, opening statements." They did the Sandoval ruling. They didn't know that some other housekeeping. And then they're done just in time for our hot take about the bond hearing before we reconvene tomorrow back at trial with, I assume, David Pecker. <laughs> but, but Barbara, we love having you on the show. You and I talked about doing something like this a number of months ago, just looking for the right opportunity. You bring a voice that's different than what we already have on the we have former prosecutors 30 years and karen friedman ignifolo we got criminal defense lawyers and others like me michael popak but to have a former judge who sat in that courthouse who presided over trump matters we got to have you again will you do it with us absolutely it was right, a real great. pleasure thank great. you great thank you very much and when we get the documents you and i'll review them and maybe we can get back on and talk about whether they complied <laughs> with the stipulation. It's always uh, an issue. There's always an issue. It's always an issue whether Donald Trump will actually uh, comply with the orders and stipulations and, and things like that. So again, Michael Popak joined by the Honorable Barbara Jaffe, formerly of the New York State Supreme Court. And we're updating you about what happened today in the bond hearing. We have a deal. The bond will be in place as long as Donald Trump doesn't uh, pee in the sandbox again and he gets that gets that Schwab account in order and the Manhattan and the and the uh, New York Attorney General is happy so until my next hot take until my next legal layout this is Michael Popak joined by Barbara Jaffe reporting.